Thank you. Finally, this day has arrived. How long have we been waiting, my friends? This project, the reunification of a community that was divided by racist policies decades ago, that era I'm officially declaring over today. Let's give that a round of applause. And I thank everyone who has made this day happen. I'm so proud, and I'll be introducing in a couple minutes. Are we not blessed to have the majority leader of the United States Senate as our hometown Senator Chuck Schumer? Thank you, Senator. Thank you for delivering. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, a fighter for this state who knows every corner of it as well, a great friend of ours, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who worked hard on this project. And representing the great President of the United States, Joe Biden, we have Mitch Landrew, all the way here from Washington, senior advisor. He's the one who says yes to the infrastructure project, so a welcome to Syracuse, Mitch Landrew. We also have the Regional Administrator for the Federal Highway Administration, Rick Marquis. Let's say hi to Rick Marquis. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have our mayor. Ben Walsh from Syracuse, who I've been here many, many times. Thank you. We have our commissioner of the DOT, Marie Therese Dominguez. I want to thank her. Commissioner Dominguez, stand up. Stand up. This woman, this woman has transformed how people view the New York State DOT. And that's from someone who spent 14 years in local government very often fighting the state DOT. So thank you for letting the locals win some of these battles. It's important because we represent them. And thank you for the amazing job you do, Marie Therese Dominguez. Also, we have our Senator John Mannion and Simon Errol Stirpe here. Let's give them a round of applause for the great work they do. Well, we're here today to make history. As part of our bold and nation-leading vision for infrastructure here in the state of New York. And our vision is not just about building roads and bridges. We're not just talking about fixing streets and sidewalks. It's about bringing people back together. It's about unifying communities, making transportation projects work for all. And our infrastructure vision right now is absolutely unmatched. New York is the only state that has boldly embraced the urgent need to reconnect communities with an historic five projects. Not one. This is Syracuse, and I love Syracuse. But we have five simultaneous mega projects that are designed to right the wrongs of the past. From Bronx to Buffalo, we've invested $3 billion, $3 billion of state money to say we have to stitch these communities back together because this is so long overdue. Communities that were cut in half, literally cut in half, severing the artery of the heart of a community with asphalts, roads and bridges and viaducts, and all this reckless post-industrial development. And we're doing the same thing not just here, but in Buffalo, the Kensington Expressway. We just announced a billion dollars for that project. We're very excited. The Cross Bronx Expressway that's going to lead to healthier outcomes for people in the Bronx. The Livingston Avenue Bridge in Albany connecting communities again. And finishing up the inner loop in Rochester. And finally, this incredible project. And as we officially break ground on the I-81 Viaduct project, this will be one of the largest transportation projects in New York State history and arguably the most important infrastructure that Syracuse has seen in at least a century. And in less than a week after I became governor, I came back here. I know this community. This is my home for four years as a student, literally walking distance from here. And I came here and started walking the streets and saying, we have to do something. This has been talked about, talk, talk, talk all the time. We have to do something. And Commissioner Dominguez knows in our very first meeting, sat in her office, and I said, let's move on this. Too much time has passed. Children have been born and went to school here and grown up and moved away and never saw a chance to see the true community that has always been there. So I said, let's do it. Let's do it. And my team will tell you I'm impatient. 
I'm impatient. And I want to get government to actually do the big things, the things that have been too hard to do for too long. And this was debated for what seemed forever. And communities get tired of waiting. And you know what? While they're waiting, they're losing faith. They're just thinking that people don't care enough. If you really cared, you'd get it done, right? Well, we do care. And that's why we're getting it done. And the people who've lived in the shadow of this viaduct, I said, we have to reimagine the potential. It's not just taking down a viaduct, a road, a bridge. It's like what we're going to do. And I'll tell you, this does not get done without extraordinary support at the federal level. So I cannot thank enough President Biden for understanding this. And maybe it's also because as a student at Syracuse Law School, he saw this viaduct. He knew this community. So one of his top priorities as our, gov as our president has been to fix this as well. So his vision, Chuck Schumer, who is in the position to get this through the Senate with his power, that's the magic that happened that brought us here today. So the historic bipartisan, and you don't hear that word often, do you? That's a real problem. It takes a lot to get support on both sides. But they accomplished it. So I want to congratulate them as well, our partners in Washington, for just making this happen, the significant funding that made this become a reality. Thank you. So the President has talked about this. This is part of his Build Back Better vision. But I'll tell you how we're building it back. We're building it back with union labor. Those are thousands of jobs, thousands of good-paying, middle-class jobs for our hardworking men and women. And we're the first state in the nation to have a local hire provision. That's just not a union provision. That means the people who live in this community will get the jobs. That's how we're transforming lives. So 26,000 union jobs. Let me repeat that. 26,000 union jobs created by this project will go to the hardworking people in this community. And the Federal Highway Administration is using this as a best practices in workforce development. They're putting a spotlight on what we're doing here in Syracuse. But as I mentioned, it's not just about the jobs, which really excite me as we keep adding to the jobs, particularly here in upstate, which I know went through a long period of decline. I lived it. I'm an upstater. I know what it felt like when it felt like all the attention was elsewhere in our state, elsewhere in the country, and people just didn't seem to care. But it's not just about creating jobs. It's about, as I said before, righting the wrongs of the past. Because we have an opportunity here. Because what happened before was a community. Syracuse is an example of what happened all over this country. This neighborhood was so full of life and history. And you go back to even back to the Onondaga Nation, the Haudenosaunee people, they were here a long time ago. And that's the territory on which this land was built. But by the 40s and 50s, this 15th Ward was beating heart of the black community. It was vibrant. There was cultural events and music and dance and food. This place meant something. Black-owned law firms. Businesses, restaurants, barbershops filled the streets. People danced at the Dunbar Center, worshipped the old Bethany Baptist Church on Washington Street. People of the 15th Ward felt a purpose. They felt pride. Work and community was their motto, and it was a place to call their own. But as the shift to suburbia started, government infrastructure projects facilitated that by creating the highways that made that white flight even easier. And that's what we're trying to heal in the rest of the country, but starting here in New York. So to too many at the time, they thought these neighborhoods had no value. No value at all. Why not? Didn't see too many of these going to the white neighborhoods at the time, because I don't think they felt that the black communities had the political clout and the power to stop a project that they would have today or that other communities had at the time. People were kicked out of their homes. They bulldozed businesses. They erased the story for so many people's lives. Well, a half a century later, the pain still lingers. The viaduct still blocks the sun. The highway still spews emissions into homes and communities. 
The sound of screeching cars are still in your ear, and children in this school are breathing fumes as they go outside and play. So let's figure out how we fix it. So as we announce the groundbreaking for this historic $2.5 billion project, we will reconnect this community once and for all. That is our mission. That is what we're doing here today. And we're going to, by constructing this community grid, we're going to take off 37,000 vehicles a day away from this school. That's going to be extraordinary. Because we're not just talking about roads, we're talking about the health of a community, the health of the children, the health of the people. We're easing congestion and creating better routes. And this monstrosity, this I-81, was built around car transportation, but now it's going to be brought back to life with bicyclists and pedestrians front of center. And so we're not just breaking ground on this and doing it our way, we're doing it based on countless meetings with the community to get their feedback on their vision for their neighborhood. That's where it should always start. This school is a perfect example, Dr. King Elementary School. People spoke out there was a plan to do a roundabout here, looked good to the engineers, I'm sure it was a fine plan, right? But the residents like, said, no, we don't like that. That doesn't fit, right? And, and thank you for speaking up, because your voice got this enlightened commissioner and her dedicated team to say, you know what, we're going to listen, we're going to adapt, and we'll change it. So that's how my administration now operates. And I'm so proud of the people who stood up, gave their time, showed up meeting after meeting, and worked with us. And down the road, we're going to have a community engagement center because people are going to have a lot of questions. We want to have one place you come. And again, this is how we prioritize the people over the projects. You come here. Any questions or concerns you have, show up there, and we'll make sure you're taken care of. And if you want to work on the project, we'll talk to you about the employment opportunities. You don't have to go far away. You don't have to find a Department of Labor place. You have to go right to your neighborhood. So I understand how people are skeptical. The scars are still very real. They have questions and concerns and doubts. But I just want you to know, we're going to finish this project. And today is going to be so much more than about roads. It's about the people. And let me wrap up by saying this. As long as I'm governor, never again will an infrastructure project be started that does not consider what a community wants for themselves, because they were here first. They are the voices we need to listen to. So forevermore, when this project is completed, people will travel around Syracuse differently. Kids will never know what their parents and grandparents had to adore. They'll assume it's always been this great, that you could see the sun, you could breathe the air. People you inter interact with, the opportunities, the ability to go up to the hospital up on University Hill and have connections to jobs and opportunities in healthcare right there. This can ignite the imaginations of the next generation about what they can do the power that they now possess. And every project going forward will make sure that equity and conclu inclusion are front and center. That's how you get more livable, more walkable, more desirable, and more affordable communities. So it's how you bring people together. That, my friends, is the legacy we're building here. We are building the example for the rest of the nation on how you seize the power of this moment, righting the wrongs of the past and taking care of the people of, fut of the future. And that work starts today. And that work would not start today, again, if we did not have the strong support of Washington and we have a champion in our own senator, but the majority leader, Senator Chuck Schumer, who's going to address you here today. And he's been part of this from the very beginning. Thank you, Senator Schumer. Okay, so Syracuse, it's official. Put on your hard hats, lace up your work boots, because the transformation of I-81 begins today. 
Today, we begin to right an over 50-year wrong, reconnecting communities to downtown, to economic opportunity, to better future, to thousands and thousands and thousands of good-paying union jobs. Today, today is the dawn of a new day for Syracuse. I-81 will be one of the most significant infrastructure projects in upstate New York's history. It's one of the biggest federal projects that we have. And to make this project a success, it'll take a whole lot of government effort and partnership, federal, state, local, all working together. But that's exactly what we have here this morning. From the community activists, to the mayor, to the governor, to the majority leader, that's me, <laughs> to our senators and congressional delegation, all the way up to the White House. So today, we will make Syracuse a national model for the future of transportation. I get this to work. Okay. A national model that says we are undoing the wrongs of the past and reconnecting our communities. Pretty good, huh? My staff comes up with this stuff. They're great. Now, when I led the bipartisan infrastructure law to passage, I did so with projects like I-81 as my North Star. Without major federal investment, it would be impossible for transformational projects like Syracuse's to happen. We can't ask the local taxpayers or even the state taxpayers to have this whole burden. We need the federal government, which has been involved in our highway system since the 50s, to really step up to the plate. Without major federal investment, it would be impossible for transformational projects like Syracuse's to happen. This cannot happen without a huge influx of federal dollars, and I am committed as majority leader to making that happen. As the governor said, it's good to have the majority leader from New York. Now, $2.25 billion, that's an eye-popping figure. But it's what it will take to make this long-held vision of a reconnected Syracuse a reality. And now that the shovels are finally hitting the ground under the governor's leadership, those federal dollars can begin to flow. We couldn't get those dollars to come in until there were shovels in the ground, now, today, there will be, and the money from Washington will start flowing in big, big amounts. I've always made it clear to everyone in Washington how much I care about I-81. In the early days, everyone came to me here in Syracuse and said, what do we do in central New York? What do we do about I-81? I said, you got to come together on a plan. There were 10 different plans. And it took a while for the community to come together and heed the voices who are here today. But we have. And once there was a plan, I brought the Transportation Secretary here two years ago. I, I lobbied the President himself and told him, as we were doing the infrastructure bill, that I-81 should be one of the top projects in the nation. And you can rest assured this, this project will receive every penny it's completed, when it needs to be completed, and it's because of the historic bipartisan infrastructure law. But it's a team, and I really want to salute Governor Hochul. You know, when we in Washington, Senator Gillibrand and I and the congressional delegation, fight for all these dollars, we got to know that it's going to be spent well. It's going to be spe spent the way it's supposed to be, and go to the people it's supposed to go to. And with a steward like our governor, who is one of the hardest working, most honest politicians we have ever seen, we know that money will be well spent. So let's have another round of applause for the governor. 
Now, the groundbreaking today, of course, is a lot about infrastructure and better transportation for central New York. But there's another word that might encapsulate what we are doing today, justice, justice. Infrastructure should connect, not divide our communities. It's supposed to be convenient, a way to make it easier to get to work, to school, to shop, to see your friends and the people you love. And anyone here from Syracuse will tell you that it, took, it was far too long that the hulking walls of I-81 were around, not as a connection, but as a barrier. For decades, I-81 stood as a concrete symbol of the city's racial division a barrier to jobs, to opportunity, to progress for the 15th Ward and neighborhoods that have been divided since it was built. The groundbreaking today starts to change that. That's why this is such a profound national model. Not just because it's righting the wrongs of the past, but laying the foundation for a better, a much better future. The federal government in the early days was responsible for segregating neighborhoods with highways like this, and now the federal government realize, has realized its responsibility and is stepping up to the plate to rebuild the communities that felt the impact. That's what, what our bipartisan infrastructure law will make happen in Syracuse. Hold up and reconnect puzzle pieces. I did that already. Should I do it again? No. <laughs> Today we are reconnecting our communities. This historic endeavor would not have happened without the community. And I want to thank a few specific people for their inspired efforts. They never gave up. They knew they were right. And finally, all the pieces of the puzzle, so to speak, were fitting together. So I want to thank our great mayor, Ben Walsh, what a great job he does as mayor of Syracuse. I worked closely with his father when I-81 was just being talked about, and now we're continuing to work with him. Our great deputy mayor, Sharon Owens. And someone who's the heart and soul of this movement and never quit, the director of NYCLU Racial Justice Center, Lanessa Owens Chaplin. Stand up. And Blueprint 15 Executive Director, Raquan Pride Green. Stand up, Raquan. Where are you? There she is. There he is. And so many others. But another big, huge aspect of this is a four-letter word, my favorite four-letter word. J-O-B-S, jobs, 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 and more jobs. Lots of them, thousands, 26,000 good-paying union construction jobs. And when we wrote the infrastructure law, we said we want union labor, highly skilled labor, well-paid labor to do all of these projects. And I want to thank our great union workers and leaders who are here today. Union labor is how we're going to build I-81. I want to say to the Central New York Building and Construction Craze Council, where's Greg Lancet? I saw him a few minutes ago. Where are you, Greg? Not here. He is here, isn't he? No? Okay, well, I give him a... Let's, you know what the Bible says. It's better to praise someone not when they're not here. So let's give Greg... <laughs> and our building trades... A, a great hand, good paying jobs, jobs you can raise a family on here in Syracuse, building up the community, making a good wage, so you know you're never going to be rich, but you can live a decent life and create a decent life for your children. We cared, Senator Gillibrand and I, very much, and we wrote into the bipartisan infrastructure law that if you build it local, you hire local. So these aren't going to be jobs from everywhere else. They are going to be local jobs. So it's J&J &J today, justice and jobs. Both of these are here to lay a foundation 
for an even brighter um, uh, next generation in Syracuse, with the great Micron plant that's coming here, with I-81, boy, are we turning the corner in central New York. It's a great day. This is one of my missions. When I first got to the Senate, I saw some of the despair on people as young, young kids were leaving because there were no jobs and no hope. And I've made it my mission. I care about this so passionately. My father grew up in Utica. My grandpa worked in the paper mills to turn that around. And now we really are. The one-two punch of Micron and I-81 says this is a new era, a new day, a new great future for Syracuse and Central New York. So, I'm here with you for every speed bump or pothole along the way, hands at 10 and 2, so that we can get the vision the community has held for so long to help Syracuse become what we know it all can be. So thank you. And now it is my honor to introduce a great partner, someone who cares, who has passion, intelligence, drive, and hard work, who's always able to reach out across the aisle to our Republican colleagues to get them to join us in good endeavors for New York and for America, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Wow, what a plethora of riches. We have such extraordinary leaders in this state. Thank you to our great governor for being uh, such a visionary, someone who understands the economy, understands communities, understands what's necessary to bring this state forward. You are performing at such a high level and getting so many good things done. Thank you, Governor, for all you've done for this, and this project and everything in the state. God bless you. <clears throat> I, I really can't say enough about Senator Schumer. Um, he is somebody who works extraordinarily hard. He's been working hard on this state beh state's behalf for decades. He knows these projects from the very beginning and makes sure it gets across the finish line. I like to call him the closer because he gets everything done, he never fails, and he never gives up. He has been such a great partner for our state and such a great leader for this country. God bless Senator Schumer. Thank you for all that you've done. And I'm really excited to welcome Mitch Landrew, our White House Infrastructure Coordinator. He is such a great visionary for the country. He lives and breathes infrastructure. He wants to rebuild this whole country. He loves coming to New York. He couldn't be a better partner for us. Thank you, Mitch, for being here. <clears throat> I want to recognize we have so many local electeds who haven't been mentioned yet, so let me just recognize Senator Mannion and Senator May, Assemblyman Sturpey, Assemblymember Hunt, Hunter, our great mayor, thank you again for welcoming us all here, our Common Council President, Helen Hudson, and our Deputy Mayor, Sharon Owens, Lanessa Owens Chaplin, our Director of Racial Justice and Center for the New York Civil Liberties Union. This kind of leadership matters. This kind of representation matters. Chris Montgomery is here, our Director of Syracuse Build, and Decca Dancel, our President of the Urban Jobs Task Force. So thank you all for being here and what you've done. So this vision for this project has been lo a long time in the making. Um, I've been visiting Syracuse for the last decade and a half and hearing about what the community wants to do. And that community leadership has made the difference. This is a perfect example of how things in our state, the best things get done, where it comes from the grassroots on up. And being able to put together this vision and then get all the resources from the state and from the federal government and from our president on down really shows what community power is about and that a community can create a vision for something that fixes the wrongs of the past and makes a brighter future. And that's what this represents to me. It's important because the result of, of, of what I-81 gave to us was disconnection. It cut a historically black community in half. It segregated a city, it isolated communities. Traffic levels rose, residents were exposed to growing levels of pollution, higher asthma rates, chronic health issues, local businesses closing. That's what the picture looked like. And we saw that across the state. We had this era of the Robert Moses vision that literally cut black and low-income communities in half because they wanted highways and byways to bypass cities to take people to suburbs. It was a wrong vision. It was a vision that never should have been part of our history in this state. 
But our state is the first who is trying to rectify these wrongs. And I-81 is one of the most significant projects in the whole country to fix it. When we coalesced around the community grid model, it was groundbreaking. It was something that um, hadn't been done before and hadn't won out in past proposals before. And that was because of the community, because of the leadership this community created, explaining this to me and Senator Schumer and to governors to say, this is what we want in this community and let's explain why this will make a difference. You won. It worked. You succeeded. It is an absolute example of what success looks like. And this new vision, it's going to create connectivity. It's going to create a more uh, equitable future for the city and the state. It will create more jobs. And this provision that Senator Schumer mentioned, this build local, hire local provision, we wrote this into the bill specifically so that our local workers would be trained, so that our union leaders would look to young, local, young employees who wanted to learn how to be in the building construction trades, who wanted to learn how to rebuild this city. And that's what we're doing right here. And so those provisions were included in the bill, and that means we have resources. This also included a pilot program. Syracuse received $500,000, a planning grant from this program to apply to the capital construction grant program. Now, we also secured $300,000 in government funding to train Syracuse youth specifically for the I-81 project. That's real money, that's real training that our union leaders can put to good work to use the apprenticeship programs that we know are the state of the art. So this is a vision for success. I am so proud to be part of it, and I'm so grateful that I can be with a team of elected leaders that just keep delivering for New York State. I now want to bring up our great mayor, Mayor Ben Walsh. Thank you, Senator. Are we there yet, Syracuse? Are we there yet? You know, there are times during the history of this project that I have felt like the little kid in the back of the car, whether it was to the governor or to any one of the other leaders that are here, just saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Syracuse, I am proud and excited to tell you that as I stand before you, we are here with the Interstate 81 project. There are so many people to thank, so many people that have been a part of this project that have helped us to get here. Uh, I want to recognize some, of course, our great governor, Kathy Hochul, uh, her great commissioner of transportation, uh, Commissioner Dominguez. Uh, the state has taken a leadership position from the beginning. Uh, they have been driving this project forward uh, despite many challenges. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Commissioner, for your leadership. To our senators, Majority Leader Schumer, uh, it is great to have the Majority Leader from the great state of New York. And Senator Gillibrand, you have been a wonderful friend and leader. We could not ask for a better dynamic duo. Thank you for your leadership as well. Uh, mayor Landro, you will always be a mayor, as you know. It is wonderful to have you back here in Syracuse. Uh, it's been a pleasure to get to know you, uh, and it's been uh, heartening to know that you are down in Washington uh, with President Biden uh, supporting these policies to right the wrongs of the past. Thank you for your leadership and your guidance throughout this process. A few other folks I want to mention. Um, as I mentioned, this has been going on for a long time, and one of the first people uh, to take on this topic when very few people were thinking about it was our former Common Council President Van Robinson. I want to recognize Van and his wife Linda for their leadership. Um, we, we are blessed here in Syracuse uh, to be led by, uh, to have been led by some great Common Council Presidents. I also want to recognize our current Common Council President, uh, Common Council President Helen Hudson and her colleagues in the Council for being here every step of the way as well. Um, I want to recognize um, Sid Hill, Tadadaho of the Haudenosaunee. Thank you, Sid, for being here. You're a wonderful neighbor to us. 
Um, again, also want to recognize our brothers and sisters in labor uh, that are going to be doing the work on this project, that have been with us every step of the way as we've developed Syracuse Build, as we've, as we've put nearly 100 people into apprenticeship programs, people of color, women, veterans, city residents that are going to benefit from working on this project. Thank you all as well. Um, it, it is not coincidental that we are here in Dr. King School. Uh, as the governor mentioned, this is a perfect example of why Governor Hochul's leadership is different. A plan was presented, the community spoke up, and the governor heard us. This school is a gem. It is, uh, we have nearly 500 uh, students in this school every day learning, and I want to recognize our students, our staff, uh, for being uh, great partners with us. Um, it is a STEAM school. So you heard about Micron, the kids that are, that are attending school today that will benefit from this project. They are going to be the future employees of the Microns of the world. They are going to be the future uh, uh, founders of the next Micron. So let's give it up for everyone here at Dr. King School. You know, it, it's all pretty much been said at this point, but you know, I do want to recognize the fact that as much and as significant as this is as an infrastructure project, it is ultimately about people. You'll notice I didn't wear, Senator Schumer taking a page out of your book, I didn't wear my car socks, I wore my bike socks today, because this is mu about much more than cars. This is about moving people in safe, sustainable ways addressing multimodal transportation, and ultimately reconnecting our communities. We are also, as I said, creating good quality jobs. Again, I want to recognize our partners at Syracuse Build. We are making sure that City of Syracuse residents, past, present, and future, are in a position to benefit from this project. We are here. We have so much more work to do. But as I look upon all of our amazing partners here, I have no doubt that we are going to be successful with this project and many more to come. Thank you all so much. God bless. With that, I would like to introduce another critical partner. We've talked about listening to the community, and we have tried very hard to listen to the community. But maybe when we didn't quite hear the community as clearly as we needed to, we had this individual uh, right there to remind us uh, where our attention needed to be focused. We have centered our efforts on this project, uh, on the people that live within the shadow of this viaduct, and we would not be where we are today uh, without Lanessa Owens Chaplin, Director of the Racial Justice Center at NYCLU. Come on up, Lanessa. Uh, good afternoon and thanks for having me today. Um, I'll be brief because a lot of things have already been said. Um, but this project has been talked about for over 10 years. But the folks who have lived in the shadow of this highway have been dealing with the burden um, for generations. Um, the residents have been living in the, in the impact of air pollution, property taxes lowering, and taxpayers leaving the city in white flight. At the onset of its original construction, Property values dropped, people fled the city, and an already overburdened marginalized community of black residents carried the burden for traffic pollution for this entire county. Today is a historic time to begin to repair this harm, restore community, and ensure that black residents who live through this reap the benefits of this project. Having walked this community, talked to thousands of people, had hundreds of meetings, and submitted over 5,000 comments during the public comment period, I can firmly say this community will continue to advocate for the completion of this project. We will continue to advocate for the viaduct to be removed, and we will continue to advocate to be made whole. And thanks for everyone here for making that happen. I want to especially thank the New York, New York State DOT for being partners in the work and listening to the community even when those conversations were difficult, even when we were outside the steps of state, the state building, rallying and protesting and coming down and listening to us and having those conversations, and sometimes are still very difficult. And most importantly, I want to thank the thousands of residents and coalition partners that showed up and showed out every chance they could to be heard on this project. Without them, this project would not be as good as it could be. 
And finally, I want to state, uh, thank the presidential administration. Um, the Biden administration did a ton of advocacy around environmental racism and environmental justice that's making this conversation the conversation we're having today and has really raised awareness on how infrastructure projects have impacted black and brown communities. With that, I would like to introduce senior advisor to the president, Mitch Landrieu. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be in Syracuse on behalf of the President of the United States. He sends his regards to all of you. Uh, as I stand here, I am really full uh, for a number of um, reasons that I will walk through in a minute, but I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to start off actually thanking members of the community for the incredible work that you have done. You have lived here, you have prayed here, you have tried to raise your families here in a very difficult time, you have persevered, you have raised your voices, and what you manifested actually is coming into reality today. So thank you all very much. Thank you. you can give yourself a round of applause. I won't go through the protocol again of all of you that have been welcomed here today, but the President sends his wishes and regards to each and every one of you. Um, but as you sit here today uh, and you think about um, what it takes to get here, the governor, uh, both of your incredible senators who both not only have power but have passion, Senators uh, Gillibrand uh, and Chuck have been unbelievable in the commitment that they have made to the people of New York. I get to travel around the country on behalf of the president. Um, and every senator and every congressman works hard for their constituents, but you have two of the best um, who I know have delivered and continue to live every day. So Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand, thank you all very much. <laughs> to the mayor, I, I, once a mayor, always a mayor. I was the mayor of New Orleans for eight years after Katrina when that terrible storm took 1,800 lives and destroyed 250,000 homes. You all gave us your thoughts, your prayers. You also helped us with money, both Senator Schumer and Senator Gillibrand and the people of New York came to our rescue. So on behalf of the people of New Orleans, say thank you. It was the best job I've ever had. Don't tell the president, I just told you that <laughs> the next time you see him. Uh, and of course, Governor Hochul, you have demonstrated uh, in your time in office that um, you have already been a great leader for the state. And I can tell you that not much gets done uh, if you don't have great leadership that is working both political, uh, in the private sector, in the not-for-profit sector, from the community up, and of course, to the men and women from labor. Uh, you know the President of the United States is the most pro-union labor president you've ever seen. He thinks that, amen. And so I, I send his regards to you. I'm, I'm, I'm full because uh, of a couple of different reasons. Number one, I grew up in the 12th Ward of New Orleans. Uh, that's immediately adjacent to the 13th Ward. That's how we see ourselves. I'm told that we're in the 15th Ward here. I grew up in a neighborhood just like this, three blocks away from Claiborne Avenue, uh, which was the street that dissected uh, the Treme neighborhood in New Orleans, which is one of the oldest African-American neighborhoods where my grandfather grew up. And so, although this is just the second time I've been here because I was here with Senator Gillibrand less than a year ago with the mayor talking to many of you about this project, as I stand here today, I feel like I'm actually standing right down the street from where my mother lives three blocks from here because I know this story. This is the story of America. And the second reason I'm filled up is because less than three weeks ago, I was standing uh, two feet from the balcony where Dr. King was assassinated uh, when he was, of course, crisscrossing this country, uh, trying to help us find ourselves again. Uh, and one of the last books he wrote was where do we go from here? So it is serendipitous that this many years later, I am representing the President of the United States, who ran for office and said that if you give me the power of the people and you work with me, I will help restore the soul of the nation. I will help reunite this country, and I will, build the back, I will rebuild the backbone of this country. And the way that I'm going to do it, in some measure is by rebuilding the roads, the bridges, the airports, the ports, 
the waterways, making sure that every child has access to high-speed internet so a little kid that lives in this school doesn't have to sit in a parking lot with her mama outside of McDonald's trying to do her homework because she doesn't have the technology that everybody else has in America and getting left behind so that she can become the person that takes us to Mars or finds the answer to cancer challenges that we have or the things that we so desperately need. Also making sure that everybody in this country has clean air, safe water, because lots of young kids are sucking water out of lead pipes that is damaging their brains that are making it hard for them to have the opportunities that they need in their life. And then finally, to build a clean energy economy that we so desperately need in order for the United States of America to lead the world and never, ever, not once, ever have to look behind uh, again. And that is, in fact, what we're doing right now, because with the leadership of Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand, Gillibrand, with the leadership and the advocacy of all of you here, the President of the United States was able to pass not one, not two, not three, not four, but five massive pieces of legislation, the likes of which this country has not seen since FDR. And those federal investments, when the federal government shows up in real time with an open heart and open mind and listens to the community, can actually help build the country from the bottom up and the middle out. And that is exactly what is happening today. This is a perfect example of it. So the public sector is showing up, and the President's vision was if we did that, good things would start to happen. 13.1 million jobs have been created by this team in the last two years. That's more jobs in two years than any presidential administration has created in four years in the history of the country. We have the lowest unemployment rate in the country that we have in 50 years. Inflation is still a problem, but it has gone down consecutively for the past 12 months. Wages are going up, and the number of jobs that are available actually are going up as well. And so when the President said that I intended these public investments to spur the private sector, the private sector that knows where to put their money because they think about return on investment knows how to show up. $500 billion in private sector investment has showed up across this country. That's when you know the idea that you had was working. And in this great state, with the billions of dollars that have already hit the ground with the leadership of these two senators, $15 billion at all, I think 279 projects are under uh, uh, formation right now, this being one of them. The President's vision for the country you see actually coming into reality. You see the seeds of the future being planted as we speak. And then we come to this very project, which I believe should give you a moment to pause, because it in fact is a perfect symbol of where the president wants to take this country. Racism in America is this nation's Achilles heel. We have not yet slayed that dragon. We will never get to a place of a more perfect union until we actually go through it, not around it, not over it, not under it. The reason why this viaduct is here to begin with, you referenced uh, Mr. Moses, this has happened all over the country where, in fact, 50 years ago or so, some people thought it was a great idea to actually take a piece of concrete and slice the heart out of communities without regard for the people that lived there, just because some folks needed to get from here to there a lot faster, without worrying about whether the kids couldn't cross the street anymore, whether the businesses couldn't talk to each other, whether or not that the pollution was actually going to hurt their kids, they're not, and they didn't care much about it. And so this President of the United States said, not only am I going to rebuild the country, but I'm going to build it back better. I'm going to build it back different. This time, we're going to ask people what they think. This time, we are going to build and design things to bring people together rather than to separate them. Because when Americans come together, there is nothing that we cannot do. And so this particular project, as the governor has said, is a great idea, but it does not stand alone. There are many of these, unfortunately, around the country that need to have reparation. And you are the ones that are actually showing the country how to do it. And so what we are here today, doing today, is not just to put turn dirt, to actually take down the viaduct and reconnect communities. You are demonstrating to the United States of America the very vision that the President has about why America will win the future. That's what really this is about. It's much deeper, it's much stronger, it's much more poignant, and I can't think of a better sign to be standing under than the one of Dr. Martin Luther King, who actually talked about the beloved community, talked about us coming together, talking about what we look like when we are one country. And as far as President Biden is concerned, this is a one team, one fight, 
one community effort to rebuild an America that we can be really, really proud of. And folks, we are well on our way. So God bless you all on behalf of the President, and thank you for the work that you have done.